We had a great defense, a team that really played together. They covered for each other. They protected one another. Uh, they really were a coachable group. And when you have a group of kids that are coachable and your best players are the ones that lead the way in being coachable, you know, it's a special thing. A coach sees it, and then you can kind of back off and let the players lead. You can talk to your captains. Uh, you can do all kinds of, of things through your players to get the other guys motivated. This team became a self-motivated team, a team that was so easy to coach. I knew what buttons I had to push during games. Glass slipper fits. Today, the unheralded Rams from Rhode Island take on the powerful Syracuse Orange men as round two begins in this NCAA tournament. Rhode Island already has upset Missouri at the big eight. Syracuse battled its way through North Carolina A&T. And now they come together in this sub-regional matchup. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Brett Musburger along with Billy Packer. Like I said, Missouri and Syracuse had no idea what they were facing. And that's what you get. Um, nowadays, you don't see it as much mm -hmm. because of the transfer rules and the one and dones. But we had been playing together for four years at that point. You had, you know, three or four seniors, four or five juniors on that team. And we had seen pretty much everything a basketball game could offer. And we had a coach who believed in us and who, you know, loosened the reins and he let us run and he let us press and he allowed us to be who we were. And it was just lightning in a bottle. We had really good assistant coaches, um, Al Skinner, who went on to yep. coach BC and do fabulous things. I was one of the best coaches I've ever been around. Jamie Campaglio, Rich Paliuka, Eddie Malone. It was just, we just had such a, from top to bottom, from the coaches to the players, um, it, was, it was really a good time in URI basketball. And I'm fortunate that I was able to be a part of it. I'll be honest with you, and I don't want to sound like the team was cocky in any way, but we were very confident throughout the whole year. Yeah. And one thing that Coach Penn was really good at, the motivational piece was was key to everybody. You know, he'd always tell us that, you know, no one respects us, you know, the whole coaches thing, you know what I mean, to get you going. And, you know, we had, we had a chip on our shoulder and we wanted to prove to people that we were, you know, able to compete at that level. And, and, and I'll be honest with you, I, quite frankly, I, we, we actually, before that game, we felt we, we could beat them. Yeah. I mean, really, I mean, we were determined that this is a game we're going to win. You said you mentioned you're a, you know, you're a senior at Syracuse. Obviously, that is a huge moment in Rhode Island history, that win to bring Rhode Island to the Sweet 16. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, maybe where you were or watching that game, being at Syracuse, but being a Rhode Island kid and seeing that upset unfold? Yeah, it, it was something else, you know, so that was my senior year, my junior year. Syracuse went to the final game. Uh, Keith Smart hit the jumper. Uh, for Indiana to beat Syracuse, I, I was at the Louisiana Superdome. It's it's wow. the toughest loss of my you know sports uh, fan viewing experience. Uh, forget the Red Sox or the Patriots. Uh, for Syracuse to lose at the buzzer uh, again to Bobby Knight and Keith Smart what was absolute killer. Uh, but we knew that senior year '88, the team would be even better. And uh, th th so so uh, what's funny is. So the tournament begins, Syracuse plays like, you know, U UNC A, A and T or somebody in the first round, uh, North Carolina A and T, as a matter of fact. And, you know, you, Rhode Island upsets Missouri. Uh, Missouri was a good team. I think Derek Chivas was their, was their big yep. star. Yep. Um, and, you know, I, I knew that Rhode Island would be, you know, a, a, a tough game, but believe me, no one in Syracuse thought that that team was not going to the Sweet 16 or even further. They were the three seed in the East that year, Temple with uh, the great Mark Macon team was the number one. And I, Syracuse was better than Temple. I, I didn't have any issue with them. D Duke was Duke was just starting to be really, you know, consistently national, you know, power. That They were the two seats. So it was Temple, Duke, Syracuse were, were the three teams in the East. There was not a lot of fanfare about URI at the time. Having that first game playing uh, Missouri. Yep. I'm pretty sure, right? Uh, and and Missouri was the favorite in it, and URI was able to do that. But, okay, they got to play Syracuse next. You know, yeah. with Ronnie Cycli and Sherm Douglas, and it's like, okay, it's URI, you know, against them. And that is the game where I think really things turned around. 
Yeah. Obviously, you know, you make the Sweet 16, it did, and all of a sudden there becomes comes a little bit of a euphoria. It was like Coach Pendens is a highly motivated coach. So, and you know, he probably planned this. So he comes in the locker room. This is for the game. <laughs> Good story. Comes in, we played, we had the first game in the tournament. It's 12, 12, 15 game. We up early. I'm sleeping on the bus. No nerves at all. We get in there, we start playing. He's like, Coach Penders in the locker room. He said, Look, the uh the commentators are saying uh Missouri Syracuse are gonna be a, a good second round game. So he was like, I don't know if I can curse on your show, but no, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> he said commentators we're gonna kick missouri and he threw an orange on the uh on the, on the backboard boom he threw the arm he was like yeah coach you know he fired us up game between rhode island and missouri played today and uh this one really in chapel hill gave us a good idea that uri could be a factor Morgan cena here to reserve kenny green for the jam Green had 14 off the bench. Derek Chivas, though, the Band-Aid man. Byron Irvin with a rejection on Carl Jones. Chivas puts it through. Tigers up by a deuce of the half. Now, Chivas at 35 on the game gets past Cena here. But it really was a one-man show for Missouri, that one man being Derek Chivas. The Rams were clicking on all cylinders. Carlton Owens picks it away from Byron Irvin. Still, Owens had 25 on the day. And then Tom Garrett he did a bit he ever in the second half. Pushes aside Irvin and sticks the J. Garrick had 29 points, 25 of those in the second half. That's the game clock, but the Rams up by seven. Garrick with a major basket, the final 87 to 80. First win ever in the tournament for Rhode Island, the third straight tournament time. But Missouri has gone out in the first round. Garrick had 29 points, as we said, most of those in the second half. He was the hero of today's game. So just, you know, kind of watching watching that, um, I, I think the only negative about that game, I guess, who was, who was guarding uh, Chivas? Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, you dropped 35. Not not a bad game. You know what? Nate, he was that good. I mean, everybody took a shot at the guy. Every, I mean, everybody took a shot at him. And it was just nothing. So, and and I remember this as it was yesterday. Coach Pinder said, I don't care if he gets 50. Nobody else is going to beat us. Yeah. I believe, I think it was, what, what you, you'll know, 28 and 26. I know they're the two highest scoring games from a URI player in the tournament still. Um, yeah. And I know that Missouri game, you had about 20, was it 25 in the second half. Was that, you know, did something just click? Was it the motivation factor? I mean, like I said, I mean, you, you put in points, you know, the whole season. But just for that mm -hmm. tournament, that run obviously was extremely special individually, shooting-wise. You know, yeah. what kind of zone were you in? I was in, uh, I, I mean, this is honest. I was in a two-year zone and Coach Penders helped put me there. <laughs> I, I had 25 points in the second half of the Missouri game because I couldn't score in the first half somehow. Mm -hmm. um, on that tape, like I said, I've watched it so many times. On that tape, at the beginning of the second half, I miss a shot, I get the rebound, and I miss the putback, but I get fouled. So I'm walking to the line to take two free throws. And in the background, you can hear somebody scream, Garrick, come on. Yeah. And it's Coach Penders. And he just, like, that's how he, he was like, bring it. Like, yeah. I was never going to stop shooting. Silk and I were never going to stop shooting. That was the way our team was built. Kenny got whatever he needed to get in the paint. Mm -hmm. And to his credit, he was a warrior. Like, he, he would go get it off the backboard. Like, it, yeah. offensive rebounds, block shot, whatever. The team was built to no just desserts of our own. It was because this is what Coach Penders had put in line. This is the way he thought we could be most successful. It was a guard-oriented team, and Silk was going to shoot the ball, and I was going to shoot the ball. And then when we needed to, Kenny was going to get inside touches. Bonzi, John, Mergen, they were going to get what they could get um, as they got it. And credit to those guys. Credit to those guys completely. They made our team what it was. And to take their roles so seriously and without any hesitation is what made us so successful. Yeah, but okay, they got to play Syracuse next. You know, yeah. with Ronnie Cycli and Sherm Douglas, and it's like, okay, it's URI, you know, against them. And 
the game was just an absolute head scratcher. They just couldn't guard uh, Rhode Island. I think it was 97, 94. But, you know, Nathan, think of the talent that Syracuse had on their team. Uh, Ronnie Cycli was a senior. He was a, I don't know how many year pro, a 12, 12 year pro. Uh, Derek Coleman was Derek Coleman. He was a sophomore. Uh, I think he was the best big guy in the country for three years. He stayed all four years in college when it was, it was no reason for him to stay for four years. And Sherman Douglas was outplayed really by, by Carlton Owens and Tommy Garrick. And Sherman was, you know, 15 year NBA pro. And then they also had Stevie Thompson, who, if he was at uh, Rhode Island would have been their third or fourth best player, you know, I, I, you know, uh, scored almost 2000 points at Syracuse. So the, the talent that that team had, uh, I knew that again, Rhode Island would be good and Rhode Island would be a, a test, but I, I did not see them losing that game. So that Syracuse game, you talked about it's the the little university of Rhode Island, quote unquote, you know, against, like you said, four future, four or five future NBA guys. You got the future number one draft pick, Derek Coleman. Just talk about the feeling of that game. You know, I was, I was talking to Kenny. I know he said he had a he had a personal relationship with Coleman and that motivated him. You know, and I think that's why Coleman fouled out. He was tired of banging with Kenny down low. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Kenny um, took a toe. So for me personally, because I knew Derek personally, Coleman, we had played um, numerous summers in um, the record league in New York against each other and with each other. So I knew him personally. I knew his game personally. We knew each other personally. Um, so there was no fear. There was no intimidation. Um, we didn't look at it going into the game that if we beat them, it was going to be an upset because our mindset was we are, we're supposed to beat them. We're that good. And we took that mentality into the game. Well, I was going to ask you about Coleman. So I guess, you know, since you're a good friend with him, because I was looking at some of that footage and it looked like, I mean, I would say, I know he probably didn't want to foul out, but based on that game, you know, I think he was, I think he was kind of tired of you. Um, I mean, you, you, you did work against him. Um, you know, what was your, what worked? What clicked that game for you? I mean, you had 23 points, six rebounds. You were kind of the reason he, you know, one of the main reasons he fouled out. Um, but, you know, what was your, uh, what was special? Honestly, honestly, it was because I knew that if we lost to him and I had a bad game, that he was going to talk so much junk to me. Yeah. The best story with Derek is, so when we came out of school, we ended up going to combine together mm -hmm. and <laughs> he was in the room next to mine and legitimately he stayed in my room the whole time because he was the consensus number one pick. He knew that he was going to be the number one pick. So he legitimately told them, I want to, he wants a room to himself and they gave him a room to himself, but he stayed in my room the whole time. And all he could talk about was that game. Yeah. I can't believe you guys beat us. I can't believe you fouled me out. I can't believe all this. I was like, yo, D, <laughs> it is what it is. It's over yeah. with, so get over <laughs> it. He was like, no, that was the year we were supposed to win it all because we had just came back from going to the finals the year before or whatever, and we were supposed to win it all that year and all that. He said, and we let a team that we had never heard of, I don't even know what Rhode Island is, he was saying. <laughs> He's of course, like, of course. And stuff so I was like it is what it is but I mean and I think that's what I think that's what happens to a lot of teams when they end up playing against you know at that time now I don't know but at that time when they ended up playing against mid-major schools yeah they felt that they were a little bit more superior because they were the five-star kids they were the kids that were at you know the Big East Big Ten yeah. ACC school stuff like that so they were in their in their mindset they were that much better than us so i think that really affected and that's what hurt a lot of big schools when they got into the tournament playing against mid-major schools yeah yeah i want to i have actually a um a clip i feel like probably was a pretty big momentum um swing during that game i think there was about like four minutes left
and you know, Garrick, I can tell there, he was feeling himself there. I think it started <laughs> setting, setting in, you know, but that block. I mean, I know if they make that bucket, they're up by one. Instead, you go yeah. back down, they're up by four. But um, it was funny. Yeah. But so, just, what kind of zone were you and Garrick in? And just, you know, the, the emotion of that game. Uh, and I, again, I know you had said you guys expected to win that. You went into it. Your confidence was high. Oh, just yeah. the, the emotion yeah. of that game. And, and, and what was that like? We, we were so motivated because we had an opportunity to put uh, URI on the national stage. Yeah. We're playing Syracuse. Everybody know about Syracuse. Not too many people know about the University of Rhode Island. So we was fired up. Sherman Douglas, I wanted to uh, destroy this guy. And, and not you know, to interrupt, a- you, Syracuse, you almost went to Syracuse, right? I almost went there. So we would have been, I don't know if I went there, if he would have been there or not. You know, so I was like, I'm going to take it to him. <laughs> yep. And Guy was like, well, man, they had Matt Rowe. He said, I'm going to destroy this guy. So we going at him. Kenny was like, I can't wait to get the hold of Coleman. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we had this attitude, like, we got to prove something. We're going to put Rhode Island on the map right now. So we was fired up. You know what I mean? I think we came out against Syracuse, went up like 10-2. So the funny story is, during the game, I had got fouled, right? So I go to the free throw line. Then uh, Sherman Douglas is on the, on the right. So he goes, I'm about to shoot a free throw now. So he goes, Where's Rhode Island? Who the hell is Rhode Island? Right? So I said, by the end of the game, you're going to know who is Rhode Island and where they located. Trust me. I'll take the free throw, make it. So if you watch the video, you'll see me smiling at the free throw line because it's something Sherman Douglas said. But nobody know that. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? That's awesome. So that – that motivated, motivated me even more. I said, you're going to know about Rhode Island. Trust me. So, you know, we went at it. We took it right to him. And went down to the stretch, down the stretch. Ended up winning by three. But uh, it was a great game. We had so much support. Our alumni was there. And, uh, you know, we pointed to the, to the stands to recognize their support during the game. Mm-hmm. This is how much confidence we got. Yeah. And I think it all stemmed from Coach Pendus. And after that game, that's when the recognition really came. Yeah. Now, these these uh, announcers, it was which was Brent Musburger, Billy Packard, the CBS. Can't expect? get much bigger. They love it. Right, you don't get no bigger than that. They love us. After the game, they give them the CBS hats, bags, everything. Like they just love us now. So we used to talk in the town in the Sweet 16. Yeah. You know, about to face Duke. You know, they, they had a shot at the end. That was, you know, yeah. in and out at the end. And um, it was close. Uh, it was a close shot. It was, it wasn't as if it was just a air ball or something like that. It was a close shot. But our reaction when we got in the locker room, <laughs> and it's the weirdest thing, there was no celebration. There was no jumping around. There was no yelling, screaming. Penders came in and said, we got work to do. We got Duke next. Yeah. We got to prepare for Duke. That was it. I mean, and it's weird because you would think beating a perennial powerhouse like Syracuse in the tournament, that there would be so much jubilation and so much excitement in the locker room. I mean, our locker room was a normal locker room because we really felt like we were supposed to win. As weird as that sounds, we really felt like we were supposed to win that game. Well, and it means so for us. No, go ahead. For us, it was just it was another day. It was just another day. We beat another team, and that's how, and that's how we honestly looked at it. Yeah, I want to make sense. I mean, that you guys were, <laughs> you won the game. You guys were that good. Yeah. Um, and you know, especially that Syracuse game. Like I said, it's I think at almost every position you guys dominated. I mean, yeah, dominated. I do want to get into the Duke game briefly. Yeah, you know. Would you say that was a uh, a classic? We we want Duke in the Final Four. We're gonna call three quick fouls on Garrick in the first half, or uh, that obviously just played a huge role. And you still I, almost won. I agree. I mean, they knew uh, Garrett was like the prime time player, 
and they wanted to get him out the game. Well, that first half, is that a, that a product of, you know, we want to see Duke in the final four. So we're going to, you know, call three quick fouls. I mean, um, yeah, uh, you can, you can say that I won't because, well, yeah, I can say that now. I, I like PC, I can't stand Duke right now. Like if yeah. any, unlike, unlike PC, I like to see Ed Cooley win Duke. I don't care who's there. Yeah. If, if they lose, it's a good day. We lost yeah. by one point to Duke. Um, they were a good team. Yeah. Coach Krzyzewski had him rolling again early. This was early in his career. He had him rolling. And we knew the challenge. Um, but I had three falls, two of which I didn't think were falls. But there's no – I'm a really good um, loser, I guess, in yeah. the sense that I'm not a sore loser. Yeah. Like, as long as I've played my hardest, and I learned this from my mom and dad, as long as I've played my hardest, I've given my all, I've supported my teammates, I've had fun, mm -hmm. then you win some, you lose some. Um, that one was a little harder to swallow. Uh, because I didn't think that I had a fair chance of playing a complete 40 minute game. Like I had my whole career. I thought yeah. some of the foul calls, but you play the game that, you know, you, you play the hand that you're dealt and we had a chance to win that game. Even with that silk was phenomenal. That game, Kenny green, Mergen Cena, John Evans stepped up. All of our role players took a bigger role because I just didn't have it that night. Um, and they, they almost led us to a, an elite eight. And I was so proud of those guys that night and so disappointed that I had an off night. Um, but yeah, I can't say that now in my current job after games, but I can say it for a game that yeah. was 30 years well, ago. Yeah. The refs messed that one up for us. Definitely. It wasn't, it wasn't an off night. You know, it's hard to do stuff when you, you know, you can't, can't get in the game. You know, they took them right out of the game. How you call two, three quick fouls on one of the best players on the team. Like that just don't happen. And officials know that. Right. When we go to half court, the two captains uses your best players. Like the refs know. They know going in who the best players on the team are. Why would you call fouls like that against a, a, a caliber player as Tom Garrett? Yeah. That's to take us out of the game because Duke got so much respect and love. They can't see uh, small, again, small University of Rhode Island beating a Duke. Uh, you know, going into the going into the Duke game, you know, obviously that's you know one one point away from uh, the Elite Eight. You know, is there anything you know in that game you I don't know you look back on that you say that game that game hurt. Yeah, that game hurt. Oh. Um, that was another game that we honestly believed and we knew that we could win. Um. What hurt us was the beginning of the game, Tommy got in foul trouble. And that kind of took us out, out of our rhythm. Mm -hmm. um, I think he had ended up having like three fouls in the first half. So he, and he, I think he might've played if 10 minutes in the first half. So um, that kind of took us out of our rhythm, but we still played well. Um, we were used to be playing without somebody. So it didn't really affect us that much, but it did affect us because I mean, he was our team, our team leading scorer. Either I think he was. I, I don't think him and Silk were that far away from each other. So, mm -hmm. but to have those two on the floor, at all, just about at all times, just made things a lot easier for everybody else. So, when he went out, um, we we had the mentality: next man up, you've got to do what you have to do. To that into that Duke game, you know, I actually went back and and watched it. You know, I know. A lot of, uh, you know, a lot of attention and press, you know, did get, you know, kind of got to, you know, Garrick and his early fouls, uh, you know, and I talked to him, I've talked to all of them about that and, you know, some questionable calls, but really, you know, obviously that affected you guys. But when I look back at the tape, you know, and I look at that Duke game, I would say you were one of the main, pretty much the main reason why you guys were able to stay in that game and really not miss a beat with Garrick on the bench. You know, I think you finished with 14 points, eight rebounds. I believe, but you know, what was your mentality in that game? Did it shift at all when Garrick went out in terms of what you had to do, maybe offensively specifically? Well, I mean, obviously it was a, a big hit to us. I mean, obviously he was <laughs> one of our main players, and obviously him and Carlton, you know, were were important to be on the court together. Um, the one thing, again, this was a credit to Coach Penders, you know, he prepared us for that. You know, he always told us, like, look. There are going to be games where I'm telling you right now, you might not get, you know, two shots, three shots, four shots in a game. But there are going to be games where we're going to need you, and it's hard, but you're going to have to be ready for it. And that's what that's what I really liked about Coach Penders more than anything. Like, he, he prepared us mentally, physically, 
you know, and he always, he wasn't down on us. So he's always confident that if one guy was out, the next guy would step up. So I always had that mentality. And, and I always felt that, you know, if I, if I was needed a little bit more on the offensive end, I could hopefully help on that, that game. I thought I was pretty efficient. So I think it helped us a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So that's what you're up against when you play against these high level teams coming from a, a smaller conference like the A-10. Yeah. And, you know, it's unfortunate, but that's the way it is. But we still hung in there. You know, we still hung in there. And we play against Danny Ferry, who was one of the dirtiest plays we ever played against. Wow. Going against Kenny. I mean, Kenny is battling. And uh, they try to get Kenny out the game. Like, you can't get both of them out the game wow. and leave me by myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can't do that. That's not fair. I said, and, I, and we said during the game, Rev, even Coach Penn said, Duke don't need any help. They got five All-Americans. They don't need help. Why are you calling fouls against us? You know, yeah. let's, let's make it a fair game and let's see the best man win. Best man win. Yeah. And as the game went along, they was able to see that. They witnessed that. Oh, these guys can really play. You know, Coach K had so much respect for us after that game. He's like, yo, you guys are warriors. Yeah. So, yeah, we don't back down to no one. No one. And we got that from Coach Pendleton. Yeah. You know, individually, you got to have it yourself. But to get that encouragement from your coach, nothing better than that. Um, And we did. I mean, we fought and we clawed in that game. I've never been – a person or a player to criticize referees or anything like that. But that was one game that I said, we kind of got a little home job. Um, they kind of did stick it to us. I mean, there were a lot of questionable calls, especially in the second half of the game when either we could take the lead or we were making a run that literally took us out of it. So, um, but it is what it is. I mean, our whole mentality was, we wanted to face Temple again. Temple had beaten us three games, three games. Yeah. At home, their place, and then in the tournament, the championship tournament, they had beaten us. So we knew there was no way in the world that they were going to beat us a fourth time. Yeah. And so that was our whole goal was to get to Temple again. And we just fell short by a point. Say, you know, your emotion after the game of knowing what a special run it was. Uh, but also being that close, you know, to being in the lead eight and playing Temple for the fourth time. Well, that, exactly. You've got to go through both of that quickly, right? So, you know, part of it, you, you, you're happy. But at, listen, once the game's over, a game like that, obviously, disappointment comes first, right? You're crushed. Everybody felt awful, you know. So that's the thing you have to go through first, unfortunately, in sports. You can make a run all the way down. If, you know, you know went to the final four, let's say, and we lose, you're going to be crushed once you lose or whatever that is. Uh, but once you get to really think about the season and obviously a little time, as you mentioned, you start to realize like, like how we got there, what we did, what we accomplished. And it just ends up being a great thing to think about, you know, as a player. And you still, I still hold those memories now, even, you know, all this time, you know, you, 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 you remember that, that stuff. You remember Carlton, Tommy and Bonzi and, and Evans and, you know, the whole crew and, and the ups and downs of the season. And, uh, but it's still, a, you know, it, it stays. The great thing about it, something like that stays stays with you for the rest of your life. So, um, definitely a, a great a great moment. A yeah. Great moment. And since I have you, Coach K, I want to talk about the 1988 NCAA tournament game against Rhode Island. As a Rhode Island guy, that was one of the heartbreaks in our history. What do you remember about that game and how difficult it was containing two of the best guards in the country uh, with Silk and Garrick? Well, Nathan, it, yeah, it, that Sweet 16 game in 1988 against Rhode Island was one of the toughest uh, NCAA games we had ever. Uh, and I've coached over 130 of them. Uh, we were fortunate to win. Uh, Garrick and Owens were outstanding players. What, what a well-coached team. And it really came down to one possession, and we were able – to win that possession and win the game. If there was another possession, it could have been uh, it could have been Rhode Island uh, going into the elite eight against Temple. You know, it is what it is, and I think that's the way it was supposed to happen. 
we were supposed to lose. They were supposed to go get beat. Duke was supposed to make it to the final four or whatever it is. And they build their dynasty. Um, but we had our run and it was a really good run. Yeah. It was a historical run for us. You know, and just, you know, kind of finishing out, obviously that season, you know, Penders ends up leaving, um, you know, Skinner comes in as a replacement and obviously he has a great run, but did you at that point, you know, do you think, or how much do you think that season really did help propel you or I, uh, whether not necessarily just attention, but just kind of focus to the basketball program, if any. Yeah, yeah, it, it did. That season helped to turn around the thoughts about URI and to let people think that URI can compete at a higher level. It's no longer a little, you know, a little roadie. And yeah. again, with the blossoming eventually that occurred at UMass and at UConn, it was kind of like, it's always been in the back. We can, we could do that and yeah. we can do that. They can still do that. And yeah. uh, I think it created a little bit of confidence in the potential, you know, ability of the program to take it to the next level. And probably was the first thoughts about, Ooh, we need a new arena. Cause inside you know 